welcome students today we will be discussing about few tips and tricks for scoring 90 plus marks in your cbsc math examination 2024 so let's get ready to discuss these which are the highlights of today's video. So what we will be discussing, we'll talk about the roadmap or strategy to prepare for your board exam. We'll discuss how to attempt examination and then score 90% plus. We'll talk about the paper design and the course structure, means the syllabus and how the paper is designed, what sort of questions and marks are going to come up. We'll talk about the latest sample paper issued by CBSC. So we have analyzed the CBSC paper and come up with a blueprint for you. We will be throwing some guidance on stress and time management. Here is the roadmap and strategy for board exam 2024. And this especially works for mathematics. The first one is make. You have to make sure that you have sold at least NCRT completely. We know that you might be referring to few other reference books other than NCRT. That is a really good thing because that gives you a good practice. But the base of your preparation should be NCRT only. There is nothing that would be asked from you out of NCRT. Right? Uh, when I say out of NCRT, I do not mean to say the same exact questions from NCRT are going to come up in the exam, but similar questions and same concepts are going to be covered in the examination. Nothing out of the concepts that are there in the NCRT. Second is solve. Solve all examples in the NCRT. Okay, when you start your class 10th, when you start with your NCRT, you go through the examples, you read the examples and you come up with the approach, right? You learn how to approach to the problem, how to write down the solution, right? But it is the final stage when you are preparing and you are going to appear in your board exams. At this time, it is really needed that you solve all the examples by writing. Don't just have a look and skip them. Do solve NCRT examples. They are important and they do come up in the exams. The next is prepare. You have to prepare notes of your own, which by this time you might have prepared. Like, for example, the formula notebook. You can have a list of formula in your own handwriting, okay? And uh, maybe teachers might have given you. Refer to that formula list. You can have synopsis of the chapters, the summaries of the chapter with you, prepared by the teachers or by you, so that you can revise in the last minute preparation. Next is the analyze. Analyze what you have already covered and what needs to be covered. What does this mean? You need to have a track on what you are leaving for the last moment. Sometimes it happens that you find some concepts or questions very easy or maybe very difficult and you think that I will cover this later on or once I am done with my syllabus and all the things, I will be revising it at the last but then you forget it to revise. So it is important that you make a record of what you are leaving for the last moment, do revise it because then what happens, it comes up in the exam and then you regret that I might have revised it. The next is practice. Maths is all about practice, you know. So you have to solve maximum number of sample papers for your practice. Now, some students, what they do, they do not solve NCRT and they depend completely on the sample papers. You don't have to completely depend on the sample papers. The base has to be NCRT. Sample papers are for your practice. Then we have do a quick revision of all the topics by solving tricky questions. Okay, when we say tricky questions, what do we mean? When I say tricky question, I mean to say these are those questions you were unable to solve them in the first attempt. So make a note of those questions, mark those questions and make sure you revise and solve those questions before appearing in the final exam. The last is develop a habit of setting the time limit to solve questions. Okay, you have to set a time limit to solve the questions. Not just the three hours paper, three hours set for the exam, but we would advise you that you set a time limit for different questions, different marks questions. That means for one markers, for two markers, for five markers, you should have a time limit that yes, in this time, I am able to attempt these many questions. That will really help you in finishing your exam, completing your exam 
on time. Now we have few points which will help you in scoring 90% plus. The first one is time management. Use allotted reading time to analyze the questions properly. Okay, whenever you are given the question paper, you get 15 minutes of reading time. How can you utilize those 15 minutes? In the initial 15 minutes, which is your reading time, what you do, go through the paper thoroughly and prioritize your attempts. You need to strategize how you will attempt the paper. Prioritize attempts mean you need to see which are the questions which are exactly same or similar that you have already solved. And you know the complete solution, you know how to write it down and you can do it at once. You do not have any doubts in them. You're confident about those questions. So attempt those questions first and others later on. Try to solve the easy and familiar questions, the same thing. Then carefully read the directions given for each questions. You need to carefully read the direction. By directions, we mean to say you have to go through the question carefully, see what is given, what the question is asking you to calculate. Sometimes you do not read the question carefully, you do not go through the directions carefully and end up committing mistakes in the question. The next is conceptualize the answer before you start writing. Whenever you start writing any answer, try to conceptualize. Like you need to figure out or see, revise it in your mind that how you are going to write, what steps are going to be written. Like what will be the first step, what would be the next step, what are the formulas to be used in that question. It will help you in attempting the question at once without mistakes. Then we have draw diagrams whenever needed. This you know whenever there are questions based on geometry, you need to draw diagrams. Diagrams help you in easily solving the questions and easy understanding of the question. Next is write the applied formulas and all the steps clearly in every solution. You have to mention each and every step of the solution. You can't skip them. You have to mention the formulas. You have to mention the identities. There are marks for formulas. There are marks for identities. There are marks for each step in mathematics. In board exams, we follow a particular marking scheme which is given to us and stepwise the marks are awarded. So even if the complete solution you have written, there are steps missing, you will end up losing marks. Then we have rounding off to be done carefully and units to be mentioned. You have to mention the units of area, of volume, whatever comes up. There are marks for it. If you do not write, your marks are lost. Carefully, the rounding is to be done. What does that mean? Whenever there are questions, in which you get decimal answers, right? Answers in decimal form. What you do, round it off to two digits after the decimal. It is not required you do it to three to four places. Till two places it would be fine. Do not leave any question unattempted. Please do not leave any question unattempted. Even if you do not know how to solve the question, what you can do is you can figure out what formula would be used in this question. What identity can be used in question? What theorem will be applied here? So those you can write down, at least you will be getting some marks. Revise and check your answers at the end. When you complete your paper, try to finish your paper on time so that you have enough time to revise and check the answers at the end. It is really important that you complete the paper on time. So here is the course structure for class 10th. You can see we have these units with us. Number system, algebra, coordinate geometry, then we have geometry, trigonometry, mensuration and stats and probability. You see these are the unit wise marks for these units. So for the first one you get 6 marks, for the second you have 20 and so on for the other units. This adds up to total of 80 marks. So this is unit wise distribution. It is important that you know chapter wise distribution because in units there are multiple chapters. So this would be the instruction set, set of instructions that you will see on the final board exam paper that you will be getting. These are the set of instruction. Let's go through them. They say the question paper has five sections. A, B, C, D and E. There would be five sections. Section A has 20 MCQs, okay, carrying one mark each. Out of these 20 question students, you will have 18 MCQs and you will have two assertion reason questions. 
clear each question would be of one mark and remember all the mcqs are compulsory there is no internal choice given in these 20 questions you will have to attempt them section b has five question and each question is of two marks so section b is of 10 marks section c will have six questions carrying three marks that means 18 marks section c section d will have four questions and there are five marks for each question so that means 20 marks this section we have then they say section e in section e in mathematics you get three case study based questions in the case study based question you have three sub parts okay three sub parts you just have three sub parts in the third part the first part would be of one mark the second would be of one mark the third part will have an internal choice which is of two marks so total is four marks so case study based question you will get three in the paper each will be of four marks now if i talk about the internal choices as i said in section a you will not have any internal choice right but in other sections you get choices you see here this is the section wise division of marks and we see here here that 20 questions one mark so it is 20 marks right and there is no internal choice but if I talk about section B, you have five questions, two marks each, but there will be two internal choice. That means out of five questions, there will be two questions in which you have an internal choice. You will be given two questions with the or written in between. You will have to choose the right. It is really important that you make the right choice. So it is for 10 marks. In section C, which has six questions, in this also out of six two questions will have internal choices similarly here where you have four questions which are of five marks out of four two questions you will be getting internal choice and then we have three case study based questions whose sub parts are like this one mark one mark and two mark in the two mark part which is the third part you get an internal choice so it's add, it adds up to 80 look at this carefully this is the blueprint in which we have chapter wise marks for every chapter this chart shows you the chapter wise weightage right if you see here in the chapter real numbers we have one mark two mark three mark four mark and five mark questions right of the real number if i talk about you have one question of one mark this is as per the cbse sample paper okay it might happen that in your exam that you will get now in that the marks differ by two to three marks okay the chapter weightage may differ by two to three marks now it is one mark one question one question of two marks and one question of three marks and total adds up to six marks you can take a screenshot of this and see which chapters have more weightage which chapters have least weightage which are easy for you which are difficult and then you can plan your preparation so here chapter wise weightage is written which can be used by you now coming to type of questions that would come up see if i talk about the first chapter which is real numbers when i say one mark question what type of questions for one mark can be asked see when it comes to one mark there are two types of questions that can come up one is where you have to find out HCF and LCM. Another is you have to use the relationship between the product of HCF and LCM and the product of two numbers, right? On that uh, one mark question can be prepared. Then coming to two mark questions. In two marks, you can have a word problem. You can also be asked to prove a number as irrational. Like suppose they ask you prove that square root two is an irrational number. Okay, so that sort of questions can come up for two marks. When we talk about three marks, again, there can be a word problem or there can be a combination of numbers which is asked to prove as irrational. Suppose uh, for three marks, they can say five plus seven root three. Prove this as irrational. Such type of questions come up for three marks. Now, for each chapter, what type of question for one mark, two mark and so on can come up for that if you want to know all the important questions likewise as chapter one 
you can find the link in the description box. There is a file in which all the important types of question mark wise are written, which will be really helpful for you. Now we have talked a lot about what should we do in the maths exam. Let us now focus on what we should avoid doing in the maths exam, which leads us to get lesser marks, right? So the first one is don't ever try to cram the processes involved in the solutions. Do not ever try to cram the steps written in the solution of a question. If you do it for multiple problems, it all will be a mess for you. It's better that you focus on the understanding of the logic, right? The next is don't pressurize yourself by studying unfamiliar topics. Please do not study unfamiliar. Unfamiliar means topics that you feel are difficult. You do not know anything about those concepts. Do not try to do in the last moment or last minute preparation for the exams. Instead of that, try to focus on the chapters, on the concepts or questions which are your strength, which you know really well, you are confident about them. Then do not study irrelevant topics. This is important. Do not study any irrelevant topic. I mean to say the ones which are deleted from the syllabus. Please go through the reduced syllabus and practice only the problems which are there in the syllabus. Because, okay, it is really good to have knowledge or understanding of all the concepts which are even deleted. But for exam, we will only focus on the relevant part. Do not solve decades old question paper. So do not solve question papers or sample papers which are too old because the pattern keeps on changing. As we have multiple changes in the paper pattern, so what we need to do is we need to practice the pattern that is actually going to come up in the exam. So practice the latest sample papers which have the same pattern as CBSE sample paper. Do not depend completely on sample papers. Yes, as I have told you initially, do not depend on the sample papers. They are for your practice. The base of your preparation is going to be NCRT only. Do not revise all the chapter in one day. You have to make a timetable and do not stress yourself. Have a good sleep a day before the exam. Do not just wake up the whole night before the exam, right? So that's all from our side. Thank you and all the best for your exams.